Hello, beautiful souls. Hello, everyone out there. This is Dr. Destiny. And today, people, I am here because I want to talk about a very hot subject. And this subject has been, it's been debated, disputed. I mean, it's been all kinds of, you know, different opinions and, you know, because everybody do have a right to their opinion. So I'm not here to start a debate or anything. I just want to give some information. That's what I'm all about. It's, it's giving information and knowledge so people can make a wise choice and decision, you know, to give them something to think about. Because I've been hearing out here in these YouTube streets and a few live streams that I've been in, people talking about a meat challenge. Yes, meat challenge. Now, I say people, you know, it, that's fine. That's what they want to do. I mean, that is great. And, you know, like I said, I've been around for a very long time, people. And like I said, I know we were brought up on meats. We were, we, we were raised in a culture where we eat meats. And I'm not saying it's right, it's wrong, or anything else. But we got to do what is right for our bodies. But sometimes we have to do things in moderation because sometimes we can overdo certain things that our body just cannot handle. So today, welcome in. I am Dr. Destiny and my YouTube channel is Destiny Forever Walks. People, let's get into this. And like I said, no debating. I'm not arguing with anyone. I'm not telling you what to do, what diet to choose, what you should eat, what you shouldn't eat. I'm just giving out information. I am an information team, and this is what I do because I have been, I have been anointed for teaching. I have been licensed. I have been, um, I have been through school and college for nutrition, health. I just, I just have information that 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 I need to share, and then the decision choice is yours because I can't make you do that. But people, we're gonna talk about meats today. <laughs> we're gonna talk about meats. And this topic, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use this topic. I'm gonna say, try this. When you find it hard to put down the meat. I said it. Try this, when you find it hard, I'm not telling you put it down, it will be a great, great choice. That's my opinion. But when you find it hard to put down the meat, because sometimes we can overdo a lot of things. We can just go overboard. But if you're overeating excessively anything, that could be meats or anything, people. Sometimes you need to think, maybe I need to try something different or try to eliminate and find ways. Well, let me give you some things that you probably need to do. If you find it hard to put down the meat, now, we got a comment section, people. You can flip up my comment section. Like I said, keep everything, you know, intact. No foul language. No debating. Just share your opinions and things, things that may have helped you to overcome excessively eating meats and whatever. Just share things so we can help each other. We're not here to fight and debate who's right, who's wrong. It's none of that's important. So let's talk about when you find it hard to put down the meat. This is talking about nutrition people and healthy eating. And this is where we gotta get to that place because like I said, we have eaten wrong for so long because people had said, this is our diet. They just, the American standard diet, well the standard American diet, the standard American diet, S-A-D, Tart said, but this is how we were brought up in our culture, so, and this is how we were taught to eat. So, but anyway, people, as we become more wiser, more consciously aware of of our living in in, in this new in this new age, people, we find out our bodies are weakening, our immune systems breaking down. And we are coming more diseaseful. Back then, days, way back then, people didn't get sicknesses as we are getting today. They weren't unhealthy as we are, a lot of people are today. So we want to know what's going on with our bodies and why we are, are going through so much mucus and so much uh, back problems or, or, or ingestion problems. Or it's a whole lot that our bodies, it's just not 
it's just not in his full healthy state. Well, he probably said, well, you know, I eat meats and all other kinds of food all my life and it never bothered me, but people don't, it don't happen right away. The problems do not show up right then and there. It may not show up for years and years and years down the road and little bits and pieces all through that time then over the process of those years your body began to break down and, and eventually after so many years bam it was right there in front of you because there was red flags there were signs and warnings telling us you know we need to pull back and we need to quit stop and we just kept going well my grandma and my granddad and my great grandma and all that you know but hey nobody arguing over here but eventually people it catches up with us and we may not, may not want to admit that maybe meats or different other foods had you know um had something to do with our bodies breaking down but let's talk about nutrition and, and, and eating healthy i'm looking at my notes i'm turning this away people let me say this plant-based proteins let me get my notes here offers many health benefits and can be less expensive than meat. Now, one way to get these benefits is to choose a meatless diet. When I say meatless, that means without the meats. Now, you cannot go cold turkey and get off the meats and just bam, like I said, just, just try to wean yourself off of it. Maybe drop down, maybe two, three times. Just keep eliminating. So one way to get to all these healthy benefits is to choose a meatless diet. And like I said, maybe eat less meat. Maybe start out seven days a week. Maybe say, okay, I go down to six, go down to five. Maybe eventually you find yourself down to three. But the whole problem is this, people. A lot of people start on their diets. And they do good for a while, and then they fall off. They just, bam, fall right off. And then they... Oh, I got to go back and doing the same old thing that I've done before. When you go keep going back and back, it, it confuses the body. It breaks down the body because the body is now saying, okay, you're eating healthy, you're eating wholesome nutri nutrients and dense meals. And then all of a sudden you start putting back the, the fats, the sugars and all those different things. And the, it, 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 it confuses people. You got to realize that. The body does get confused so we need to start eliminating things and once you put that thing down or that food or whatever it down and then you know don't go back to it if you can stay off of people at least between two weeks three weeks why go back now you're working toward the next level right so you're working toward the next step of it instead of going back okay i went without so and so for three weeks Hey, congratulations, you're on your way. Anytime you can continue to do anything consistently, they say over, over 21 days, you're making progress. So keep going. People, decide to eat less meat for many reasons. So many people that they just decide, I eat meats for this reason, that reason, that reason, but they decide to eat less meat for so many reasons. Some people eat um, less meats for because it maybe have health issues or things like that. Some people just go totally meatless at all because of different reasons, people. But you may want to cut out meat for good health. You may want to cut out meat for your ethical reasons or your religion reasons or cultural reasons or even environmental reasons. Whatever that reason is, it's just your decision, that's your opinion. I, I respect that. But it can be hard to make changes to your diet and still serve healthy meals because you're still adding all the meats and things like i said you know just gotta learn how to cut back or just cut it all out all together okay so why not start by serving meatless meals that's the one way that's just an just an just an uh, idea serve meatless meals once or twice out of the week you know and when you're doing that Serving when you're eating now down to once or twice out of the week. Don't say, hey, okay, you know, I didn't eat, I didn't eat three, four, five days of meat, so I'm gonna overdo it. Don't overdo it. Never overindulge yourself. Just stay at a small level and just respect that. Hey, I'm eating twice or once or twice out of the week, but you don't have to go ahead and try to eat up the whole the, the farm on animals, you know, and all that because you haven't eaten uh, meat seven days a week. So try to cut back your meat 
people try to do that. Like start eating meatness even in, even once or twice out of the week. Meatless meals, they are built around your beans. These are your dry beans on people, your lentils, of course your vegetables, your whole grains and all that good stuff. Now plant-based proteins offer many health benefits. Now eating more plant-based proteins, people, it can help your budget as well. We know that. And they tend to be less pricey than meats because meats, man, I'm telling you, I haven't eaten no meat over nine years and I don't know what the prices are because I don't go near the meat section. But I hear people talking about all the time the price of meats, how expensive they are. But if you learn how to start incorporating those lentils and those beans and those vegetables and those whole grains into your diet, people, you can still get your plant-based proteins from this for good, healthy benefits. It can eliminate that pricey cost of meat. Now, the health factors, I'm going to read from my notes. A plant-based diet focuses on fruits and vegetables and grains and beans and peas and lentils and nuts. And it's also rich in fiber, people, rich in vitamins and other nutrients. And people who don't eat meat call themselves vegetarians or even vegans. And But generally, people eat fewer calories and less fat. Now, they also tend to weigh less and they have a lower risk of heart disease and non-vegetarians do. Now, people that don't eat meats, like I said, they have a lower risk of heart disease than non-vegetarians do. Because they have, you know, when you eat meats, it's more risk at getting a heart, uh, heart diseases and all that kind of stuff, right? So, research shows that people who eat red meat are at a higher risk of death from heart disease, from stroke, as well as diabetes. So, processed meats also make the risk of death from these diseases and make those things, those statistics, those numbers, make them go up. Do you understand that? Make them go up. So I said processed. Now, this processed meats, people like the bologna, salami, and all that other processed foods. People, you need to stay away from that stuff. Processed meats also make the risk of your uh, of death from these diseases and make them go up man just just way out of numbers and what you don't eat also can harm your health what you don't eat so we gotta be, make sure that we are watching what we're eating not necessarily saying watching the meats but all other food you need to also make sure that we are eating the right nutrient dense Foods. Make sure you get plant-based foods in your body as much as possible. Those leafy green vegetables, people. And make sure you're eating raw foods a lot. Act, incorporate a lot of raw foods and you know, don't have to cook them all the time. That's another video. I've already done that before. But people, as I said, and what you don't eat can also harm your health. So diets low in nuts and diets low in seeds and the seafood and fruits and vegetables can also make your health risk go up and the good news is that even eating less red and meats and those processed meats it has positive effect on your health so the question is this now how much protein do you need most americans get enough protein in their diets the recommended daily intake of proteins for adults is about 50 grams, people. 50 grams. And of course, your protein needs, they're going to vary. They, your needs will vary with your age, with your weight, as well as your health, pregnancy, and your activity level, and so many other factors. They will vary. So adults need about 5 to 7 ounces of protein-rich foods a day. So keep in mind now, people, you can choose from more than one source of proteins to get the protein intake that you need on a daily basis. Now, let's talk, let me, let me scroll my hands here. The Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommends a choosing a variety of proteins. 
That's the um, dietary guidelines for Americans. It recommends choosing a variety of proteins. And like I said, these could, could, could include those who eat all, eat all certain diets with these types of foods in it. So it includes like eggs, your low fat milk, and products made from the, these different types of foods, okay? That may also from beans and peas and lentils, soy products, and unsalted nuts, my people, and seeds as well. So if you're eating a higher calorie protein source, then you need to stick to smaller proportions. Smaller proportions, okay? For example, enjoy just about one half ounce of nuts or one to taste, one to two, one to two tablespoons of peanut butter. So you cut him back and, you, and, you, and that's a wise and healthy decision to make. Now, the guidelines also suggest replacing protein foods that are higher in solid fats with choices that are lower in solid fats and calories. The meats, well, there are so much fats in meats. We know there are a lot of meats that's very, very, very uh, fatter than others. But the fats in meats, the poultry, the eggs, and the high fat uh, dairy products such as cheese, they are called solid fats. They are called your solid fats. And these fats that you will find in seafoods, you will find in nuts and seeds, and they are all called oils. So like I said, omega fats, oils that come from your fish and all of those things that's from your seafood. And then you got nuts that have oils in them, you know, and all those things they are called oils. So my people, here's another thing I'm try. Try meatless once or twice a week. Now, I'm scrolling. Now, you don't have to get rid of all the meat all at once. And I, I and, and yes, I, I, I don't know advise anybody. Just go cold turkey, people. Like I said, work your way down until you get to the place where you can feel comfortable. That we're, hey, I don't need this as much. And your body's now getting adjusted and used to, you know, without having meat in your body on every single day. So you said, just work yourself down to that place, people. You don't have to get rid of it all at once. Just try easing into a meatless diet, to eating meatless meals. And think about going meatless maybe just one day out of a week, or possibly, like I said, that two days. Then you will find that you want to add more days. Oh, I did. I didn't have to do this. I didn't have to eat this. I didn't have to eat all that. And you went three, four days, and then I ate meat, and I went another three days. Hey, I'm doing good. I'm down to one day. Hey, people, that's a great thing, and you're doing great. So, people, if you don't like the idea of whole day without meat, and a lot of people, I got to have my meat. I had clients always call me and, and crying. That's what that's my health is horrible. My health is so bad, and I need your help. I need you to give me a diet. I, I can do all of that. I can help you to get the proper, the right diet plan for you. But the moment I say you need to start eliminating meats, I can't do that. I can't do that. I had so many clients. I can't. I, I just can't do it. And they will never call me back again because that was something that they weren't ready to give up. So the choice is going to have to be yours. I don't make it. I'm not going to go in here and call you up and beg you. No, that choice decision has to be yours in order for you to stick to it. So if you don't like the idea of a whole day without meat, people can start with a couple of meatless dinners each week. A couple of meatless dinners each week. Plan meals that you use your favorite recipes with that are typically like meats, such as like lasagna, you know, soups and pastels and vegetable soups. Or try substituting the following protein-rich foods for meats in your recipes. And these uh, recipes, meats you can get, it's like beans and peas and lentils. They can be added to a casserole or to your casserole as well as to your soups, people, and your salads. Also, you can try vegetarian, those refried beans. See, these, like, these has a meaty source, like a texture to them. So, people, the vegetarian refried beans can also be used instead of uh, meat in your uh, burritos or your tacos and all that, people. Try refried beans. It makes a good source. And then also, you can add tofu. 
that can be added to stir fry foods and dishes as well. And it has all these uh, different foods has these meaty uh, texture. So that's a good way to start eliminating meats and get that texture still of, of, of a meat taste with these different types of foods. So people, when meat is on the menu, what happens when the meat is on the menu? When your meals include meat, people then just don't overeat them because it includes meats. You don't have to go and get excessive. Please don't. Choose lean cuts and stay away from oversized portions of meat. Stay away from it. A serving of protein is three ounces, people, and the size, and that's the size about the size of a, a deck of cards. Yes, a serving of protein is three ounces which is about the size of a deck of cards. An easy guide to balance your meal is to divide your plate. That's a great idea. Divide your plate and, and you know what goes here by, by, the, by the portion that you're gonna use. So that's an easy guide. Just take time out and just divide your plate. If you divide your plate into three sections or whatever, then protein should take up no more than one fourth of your plate. Protein should take up no more than one fourth of your plate. Vegetables, people, and fruits, they should cover half of your plate. Vegetables and fruits, people, we gotta get those vegetables and fruits in. It should be covering half of your plate. And the whole grains, the whole grains, it should make up the rest of your plate. That's how you're going to do it. You're going to divide it in those three sections. But you make sure that your proteins takes up one-fourth of your plate. When your vegetables and your fruits, it covers half of that plate, people. you got to have all those vegetables and those fruits. And then your rest of your plate that's left, the little section there, then you add your whole grains to make up the rest of that plate. So people, flexing for your health. Flexing for your health. Now, I know there's another diet you heard called the uh, flexitarian diet. Well, the term flexitarian, it describes someone who eats mostly plant-based foods, but the person occasionally still eats uh, meat and poultry and fish. So they call them flexitarian or, or, or pescetarian too. I think sometimes we eat seafoods and things to that nature of people. But people say that seafood and poultry is not meat people. They are meats. Believe me, they are all category in the list of meats. As you do your study and research, you will find that as well. Now, I'm about finished. So, plant forward. If you never heard that before, plant forward. It's a style of eating that includes meat. Plant forward. But meat is not the star of the of the meal, people. See, a lot of people they, they wanna see they eat mostly plants, but they have a little bit of um, you know, meat on their plate. But it's not the star of meal. That's not the star part of their plate or their diet. So plant forward, like I say, it's a style of eating. That will include your meat, but meat is not the star of the meal. This kind of healthy eating is the key to the Mediterranean diet. That's another diet, Mediterranean diet. It's also a key to other cultures or other cuisines of food, such as your Asian people eating, your Ethiopian type of eating, your Indian type of eating, and even your Mediterranean uh, Eastern diets. Now these diets, they, they limit red meat. These diets, as I mentioned, this kind of healthy eating is the key. This plant for this Mediterranean diet, people, is the key, like I said, to your Mediterranean diet. And people, it also is the key to other cuisines such as your Asian foods your Ethiopian foods, your Indian foods, and your middle, 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 <laughs> middle Eastern foods or your Eastern diets. But these diets, like I said, they do eliminate or they do limit red meat. And they focus on fruits, people. They focus on fruits. They focus on fruits and they leave the vegetables and greens and all those good things like beans and peas and lentils, nuts, your whole grains, and healthy fat, people. We got to start getting to healthy fat. We're eating a lot of unhealthy fat, healthy fat, 
So do researches and study and find out more about what your healthy fats are, people. And you can have healthy fats, you know, versus eating unhealthy fats. Now, this type of diet has been shown to lower the risk of heart disease and other chronic conditions within your body. So, my question is, well, my question, my advice, why not work on your flexibility? Why not work on your flexibility and start enjoying some healthy benefits? So that's what we got to get to. Flexibility. Flexibility is something that we need to be working at, people. And I'm finished. I'm done. And I'm telling you, people, when you hey, when, when you having health issues and there is a lot of um, things that's going on in your body that you cannot understand, you're tired, you're fatigued, your uh, brain fog, and your body's full of mucus, and it's just a whole lot of things going on. You like you don't know what's going on. Then start keeping a journal of all the foods you eat, and put down the dates and how much of the portion you eat it, and just put down those things and keep a, keep a list of those things. I ate so and so today, and I ate this, and I ate this amount, this uh, many ounces of it, whatever I ate of it, and put down the times and just keep that general so you can see what your body flares up with a lot of mucus or indigestion or you having bowel problems or whatever situation may be or colds within your body that's taking longer to, you know, for that to get rid of, then maybe it's coming from foods, not just meats, but other foods as well. So people, please watch out and make sure that you put your health first, okay? Eating people... People eat, like I said, for many different reasons. A lot of times, it's not because you're hungry. It's because sometimes you become addicted. So, when you find it hard to put down that meat, then maybe you want to try some of these things that I just mentioned in this video. I'm going to talk to you lovely people at the next video. And to the next time, I want to hear you all commenting, telling me, and sharing some things. How did it go when you decided to... Um, to change your diet to more meatless diet. Start eliminating your meat from eating seven days down to two. And you found a side you got down to one. So you decided to go a whole week. And you when you go a whole week, people keep going. When you go a whole two weeks, there ain't no need to turn it back then. If you can get past something with in three weeks consistently in 21 days, people, you're making a hell of a process. You're making a hell of a progress as well. And that tells you that you don't need it at all. So, people, I'm going to see you in the next video. Comment, 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 and I'll talk to you later. All your people out there on this meat challenge, keep going. Keep doing what you're doing, but be mindful. Or once you go to a certain place, people, why keep returning back doing the same thing that you have already overcome? It's best for your health and a whole lot of greater on your body because your body won't have to deal with you keep breaking it down. Then you're giving it what it needs and then it's enjoying it. It's trying to spring back and be healthy and wholesome again and vibrant. And it's, 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 it's just going to live. And then all of a sudden, hey, I throw that out now. I did it for a week or two weeks or whatever. Now I'm going back to all these old, fatty, unhealthy Booze and your body said, hell with you, let me go downhill. I can't take it no more. You don't want to get to that place. When he finds it hard, people, to get rid of the meat, you will try this. Talk to you in the next video, my lovely people. I say namaste, beautiful souls. Love you guys out there. Please share, share out this video. Thank you.